In this video I'm back at Borth in Cardigan Bay. I'm fishing either end of a section with rock armour groins. The first session's in May at the southern end and the second in September at the northern end. Conditions for both sessions were less than ideal for catching flatfish but other fish turned up. With small eyed rays and turbot a possibility it's useful to bring a variety of baits. Here I've got mackerel, razor clam and sand eels as well as squid and ragworm. I'll be alternating the use of these on three hook clip down rigs and two hook flapper rigs. Clipping down is not vital since you're not casting that far out. I've got here a bit late for the first session and the tide's already coming in. Apparently you're more likely to catch a small eyed rays and turbot at low water with the prime time being the first two hours of a flood. You're fishing onto sand on this shallow surf beach. The tide comes in very quickly so I haven't set up right at the water's edge, which means after casting I'm walking back and feeding out line. I'm using leads with wires as it's a bit too windy for my liking. However, the wind is straight on shore so there isn't much of a lateral drift. As I'm about to cast out my second rig, I run through the locational details. My previous Cardigan Bay videos give a full regional setting, so here I'm just zooming straight in onto the Borth area. Borth is at the southern end of a low-lying land south of the River Diffie. It merges into Innisless and the beach can be divided into three distinct areas. This video focuses on the rock armour groin section, but I have others covering the wooden groins and the open beach. Innisless Point is at the mouth of the estuary opposite Abba Diffie. The rock armour groins are five fishtail groins with other structures in between. These defences protect the built up area of Borth. There are a number of little alleyways between the houses that give access to the beach. Here I've precisely located the two locations I've fished for this video. Although it's sunny, it's pretty cold in the wind and it didn't take long for me to get my jacket out. I didn't get a bite, it looks like something's had a go at the ragworm, so that needs to be changed. On this rig, I've got razor clam on the bottom hook and ragworm on the other two. In the distance you can see Borth Head and that's fishable at low tide off reefs 
However, I haven't got round to that yet, so that's left for a future video. You can also see the two rock armour breakwaters, which are slightly offshore. I'm fishing to the left of the first fishtail groin, which is to my right. To access this part of the beach, I've walked down the second public alleyway between the houses. Now it's a bit of a disappointing start, I was hoping for a couple of fish before I had to make my first move up the beach. Although something's clearly nibbling the bait, I haven't seen a bite yet. Because there's a channel behind me, it's a bit safer for me to move my gear right onto the shingle part of the beach. To avoid moving my gear about so much, in future, I might consider bringing a platform to put it on. I'll then move the platform with a gear on it when the water gets too deep. I do this on some venues along the Bristol Channel that I fish. Here I'm leaving my rigs out, opening the bail arm of my reels and moving my rods back. Tighten up the slack line and drag in the rigs a little bit. The channel behind me is starting to fill up quickly. This is at the base of a shingle part of the beach and I'll be looking to cast into that closer to high tide. The light started to fade and I've still not had any bites when I've been on the sand. So much for the theory about catching at low water. It's not until I retreat to the shingle part of the beach that I get my first indication. Not a flatfish, but a scaldy bass. The wind's died down now, and it's quite pleasant as the sun is setting.
Better late than never, and I've started to catch now. To my surprise, this schoolie has taken sand eel. Now it's my only fish on fish baits. All the other schoolies were on ragworm. I fished on until it got dark, and I was rewarded with a better sized fish. But I had already packed my cameras away by then. I did have one decent bass on, which took line off me, but unfortunately the hook pulled through. That lost fish, however, has given me some encouragement to come back, and hopefully when I return to this part of the beach, the turbot and the small-eyed rays will be back. When I returned to the area in late September, I was tempted to go back to where I fished the first time. However, instead, I opted to fish the other end of the section with the rock on my groins. This time, I think I timed it a bit better, arriving an hour before low tide. Another pretty windy day, with some very strong gusts. The surf breakers were quite high, and I wasn't too hopeful of flatfish. Pretty much the same gear as before, but this time I've raised my rods a bit higher. I've replaced the two hook flapper rig with a Wessex rig, which pretty much acts in the same manner. However, in this setup, the bottom snud is free running. There's a little bit of annoying weed about, and with the drift putting my rig out of position, I decided to change the pyramid lead over to one with wires. I've also placed some bait in my box, but I've got the rest of my gear some distance away. Once again I'm thinking that perhaps I should have brought a platform. By using a platform, I'd have more of my gear close to hand. Before I recast, I'm just checking to see how far my other line has moved out of position. With a stronger wind, there seems to be more of a lateral flow.
Unlike the previous session, it didn't take long for my first bite. It started raining, but that's not bothering me too much since I've got my first fish on. It's only a small schoolie, but at least I'm quickly off the mark. Another bite almost instantly afterwards. Well, it felt like I had decent fish on. Maybe there might have been two on, and one of them's come off. This one's fallen to the ragworm on the top snood of a Wessex rig. The bottom hook's got double sand eel on, so it would have been interesting to see if there was a fish on that one. Sand eel seems to be the preferred bait of a small eyed rays here, so I could have had a ray on as well. But you never know, and it could have been a slightly bigger bass on that one. After all, I did catch a bass on sand eel last time I fished this section. Since the baits don't look too damaged, I'm not replacing them but casting them back out again. The next bite produces another scaldy bass, but at least it's quite a contrast with a previous session where I didn't get any bites at all over low water.
Not every bite's producing a fish, and there's a little bit of weed about. Waves acting on a weed also knocks your tip about, so it's a question of interpreting bites. Now that feels a little bit different. I've struck after a couple of little knocks. I'm putting the backrest of my seat box down since it started to rain and I'm a bit concerned that the wind might blow it over as well. Still not sure what I've got on, but I do know it's taken ragworm since it's on the free hook rig. Well, there's the result. It's my first ray from Borth.
a nice small eyed ray. It's taken ragworm as opposed to sand deal, which is meant to be their favoured bait. The ray was caught just on the turn of the tide. It's coming in now. Back to schoolies now, and this is the smallest one so far. The tide's coming in quickly now, and as you can see, it's also pushing in some small bits of weed. Still catching, and that's yet another scordy bass.
With the water having reached the groin, I've now retreated further back, almost onto the shingle. My next move is onto the shingle, as the weather takes a turn for the worse. It's now getting difficult to keep the rainwater off the lens of the cameras, so apologies for the quality. The bites keep coming, and this one feels slightly better. It's a bit difficult to see with that misted up camera lens, but this one's much better. In fact it's sizeable, so it's a keeper. The action's getting quite hectic now, so I'm down to one rod. It's now an hour or so before the top of the tide and the winds died down a bit and fortunately it stopped raining. I'll carry on for a bit as this is a pretty enjoyable session. It would have been much better without the rain and that wind earlier on. I can't complain though since I've had 15 bass, one of them being sizeable. But the highlight for me, obviously, was landing my first small eyed ray from Borth. I'm now looking for today when I can catch small eyed rays and turbot together. So I'll definitely be back sometime to try for that. <laughs>